Uh, Mac Warrior Online patch notes for 20th of June 2023 are finally out, guys. And of course, we're going to get new legendary mechs and some new stuff and some new changes. Let's talk about them in this video. So let's see what's happening. The Stone Rhino is going to be next month. If you want to have a look at a review of the Stone Rhino, make sure to watch the video I made on this. You will also get the pre-order bonuses up to four weeks until the release of the Stone Rhino. So you can watch my channel, for example, see how the Stone Rhino does and then decide whether you want to get that legendary mech or not. But I think most of you guys will probably get that. So what do we get in this patch? We get two new legendary mechs, the Quick Draw Desperada and the Timberwolf Howl. Ooh, then we get mech quirk adjustments, mech adjustments, bug fixes, and more. Presdex is apparently working on a new brand new map, and there will be investigations into potential matchmaker solutions. Okay, faction play, new weapons, new mechs, and bringing some sort of respawn into quick play. Respawn and quick play can be very good, because you get more than one life, and maybe some people will start playing a little bit more aggressive moving forward. However, it also means that your quick matches are lasting longer. And if you've ever been in a bad faction play match, sitting in there for 20 or 25 minutes in a row, uh, getting your buttocks pushed in, then um, you know the feeling. So mixed feelings can be interesting, can also be a problem. Um, I hope they try it maybe with an event uh, first and see what players say. Now, new map, here's a quick sneak peek. Um, so this is the silo from i think like river city or something like that this is the hpg <laughs> manifold uh satellite dish we're not seeing anything else here another satellite dish right here could be like a tech focused map um and it's gonna be a little bit darker maybe some night time event interesting all right how do we get back from this there we go now there will be a post-patch science sale as always, and there is currently an Inner Sphere Light Max Solaris event and sale with some cop items, so if you don't have them yet, go grab them. And then they would like to remind everybody that MechWare Online, to paraphrase, is a game. Have fun. Don't be a dick. That's me paraphrasing all this inclusivity and stuff. Okay, now we talked about the Stone Rhino. Let's talk about the new legendary mechs where apparently the pictures just died. Here we go. So each legendary mech will go for 15 bucks on the website and on Steam. Existing chassis variant will have a new paint job, outlier quirk and a 30% seatbelt boost. Plus, of course, it's going to have the battle pass as always, plus some GSP seatbelts, uh, MC premium time and cockpit items, plus colors and bolt-ons that have been part of battle passes. The battle passes were always fun, and the good thing about Mechware Online battle passes is, and I really commend PGI for doing this decision, they don't time out. If you buy that mech, you can do the battle pass whenever you want to. As, you do, as you're playing the mech, you are getting your stuff, and you don't have a deadline, so that's nice. Now, Quick Tour Tesperada. Fight me! <laughs> I mean, so here's the thing. The Quick Draw Mech Warrior Online is historically seen a terrible mech. Very few people play the Quick Draw, with the exception of the Quick Draw IV4, because, I mean, it's, it's nicknamed the Quick Die for a reason. However, this one might be interesting enough that a lot of people will pick it up, because I'm seeing PPCs and I'm seeing Gauss. I mean, of course it's Gauss PPC. What do you expect these days, right? Do you expect a brawler? <laughs> uh, like the uh, color design though, could be interesting. Now then, let's scroll a little bit. You can see an action shot with PPCs shooting. These must be light PPCs. No way this is anything heavier than that. Ah, here we go. There is the loadout screen. So, basic build, light 250. That's a very slow quick draw. Two jump jets, four light PPCs, and a Gauss rifle. A Gauss rifle. Okay. Now, the reason why we call it the quick die is look at the armor on the torsos and the structure. Um, I think you'll find that an urban mech is probably as tanky if not tankier than this thing. So um, that might be a problem. I think I think what I'm seeing here is quirks might need to be adapted, but that might be true for the whole quick draw class. Interesting for us here is it's getting bonus ammo on Gauss and light Gauss, not heavy Gauss because heavy Gauss doesn't fit in an arm. You get 20% Gauss cooldown on light and uh, normal Gauss, 35% velocity, 35% PPC velocity, 35% pulse laser duration, 35% standard laser duration, 
and light PPC heat scaling with plus two. This could be a very interesting mech in terms of like a triple large pulse as a loadout, for example. Um, but also light PPCs, quadruple light PPCs, and something like an AC5 instead of the uh, light Gauss or the Gauss. Lots of potential here. 35% ballistic, 35% PPC velocity. Very interesting. Um, also interesting to me, why does it have light PPC heat skill limit plus two? Are we missing a hard point here? Because it's only got four hard points as far as I can see it, and light PPCs shoot in groups up to three. So the plus two doesn't make any sense to me right now. Ah! Haha, -ha, here it makes sense. Because there's a Gauss rifle in the right arm, and the Gauss rifle counts as a PPC for heat scale limit purposes. The light Gauss would not count, but a full Gauss does count, and that's why you need plus two. Alright, problem solved, moving on. Now, here is our next mech, the Timberwolf Howl. And I'm seeing interesting things here. I'm seeing at least four ballistic hard points, plus missiles, and some, some lasers. Okay. Looks like a nice paint job. Some symbols on there. I wonder what that's going to be. Does, does this say Howl on here? It's, it's That might say Howl. I can't read that, unfortunately. Alright. But here's the thing, guys. I actually had to do a double take as I looked at this mech. Can you spot the amazing thing that is this mech? This is a battle mech. That's not an Omni mech. That's a clan battle mech. You can change the engine. So... As far as hardpoints is concerned, we are looking at, what is this, four hardpoints for ballistics, four hardpoints for missiles, and only one energy hardpoint. I mean, I, plus it has mass capability and jump jet capability. Alright, and then let's look at the quirks. Armor CT and side torsos. It gets 20% missile velocity. 20% ATM velocity, and is it 60% ATM range? 80% ATM range! So does this also count? That, that, that also counts for min range, by the way. ATM range should count for min range. So, this is nuts. This is going to be an ATM monster. Those ATMs are going to fly at 40% extra speed, and they're going to be able to hit targets at like 1500 meters. Plus. That's crazy. That is that is insane. And it's a battle mech, guys. Like, I'm gonna go out on limb here. It's not gonna take long for this to run either 4 ATM9 with mask or 4 ATM12s. Because it's a it's a battle mech. You can switch out the engine. You could probably do 4 ATM12s on this thing. Which would be brutal. That could give a little bit of a revival to ATMs. Um, or you could see Daka builds with this. You could, you could see full exposure or jump jetty Daka builds with this. Maybe. We'll see. But this is a lot, this is, has the potential for a lot of mech science. So I'm looking forward to this as well. So both mechs, definitely interesting. Definitely interesting. Definitely looking forward to them. Now, mech quick adjustments time, guys. Let's talk about them. Cicada 3M. Ballistics cooldown and energy cooldown removed, energy range removed. We get flat range, extra flat cooldown, and UAC gem chance 50%. Up from 30%. Nice. This makes it half as likely for your UAC to jam. Okay. Cicada 2 Alpha, medium laser duration removed, 10% flat laser duration added, so it's a slight buff. Cicada 2 Bravo, medium pulse laser cooldown removed, energy cooldown removed. Instead, standard laser cooldown and duration added. So they wanted to go standard on this 2 Bravo. Cicada X5, 10% range removed, missile velocity increased to 20% and 50% missile range added. This could be interesting for SRMs, if you can get, if you can swing the Artemis, of course. Cicada is always a little bit of a problem. Black Lanner, right arm and left arm armor bonus increased by plus 4 and plus three respectively, and 10 structure bonus added to the left arm, okay? Cyclops 11 Alpha, Gauss have a cooldown removed, heat, minus 10% now, up from minus five, cooldown, minus 
synced up from minus 10% and 10% range added. Okay, so this helps this snipe better, probably. 11 alpha DC, that is the ECM mech, right? Minus 5% heat. The 10 Z, 10% is 20 cooldown, 10% and 5% cooldown removed, and 15% flat cooldown added. And the slipe near gets an extra 8 structure on left torso and right torso, and an extra 4 structure on the CT. Nice. Supernova Bravo, laser duration, 10% now instead of 5%. We're talking about the, the deduction, right? Supernova Boiler, 25% UAC gem chance! Woo! Because you guys know how hard it is if you're thick, a throbbing UAC 20s gem. It's not fun. Fafnir! <laughs> All variants, left torso, right torso, armor bonus, up plus 34 from plus 26. So, I guess either the data or the, f the, f the feeling or the feedback or all of it together showed to PGI that those hitbox changes were are a problem. So they upped it last patch, and now they're upping it again by another eight. Like I said, guys, that's that. I don't I don't know if that can be fixed by just adding more armor to the mech. I just think it's a it's a it's a thing of a hitbox and b size. But, I mean, I'm not gonna complain about more extra armor, but it's still not gonna make that giant side torso hitbox go away. It's still gonna be there. It's just gonna require two more farts now to take it off. I, had, I just heard a really good comment in chat. That'll keep it alive for five more frames. <laughs> yeah. You can use armor bonus and structure bonus to some degree, but you cannot fix bad geometry or too big a mech with it. So, we'll see. It, it's gonna be a, a slight improvement. Is it gonna be enough? We'll see. Moral 2, 4 HP. Agility have been, has been changed to, similar to the rest of the Moral 2 variants. Is that a buff or a nerf? Because I, I hope this is a buff because the 4 HP as a predestined SRM bomber, for example, needs agility, right? So I hope this is a buff, not a nerf. General changes. Default mouse sensitivity is lowered when creating a new account. That's a good change. That is a really good change, because a lot of players in MechWarrior Online, probably myself included, have too high sensitivity and it just causes you to overshoot your targets and not aim properly and not aim accurately enough. So use lower sensitivities, guys. Now then, bug fixes. <laughs> UX Jam Duration Node Header Title now properly reflects the node's effect in UX and Rax. Yes! It only took us two years, but we finally have removed the, uh, changed the text. It's not jam chance, it's jam duration. And if the nodes always said the correct text, it's just that the header of the nodes said jam chance. Summoner G is made consistent with other summoner variants, left arm structure 22 and left arm max armor 44. Only affects summoner G and not the summoner G special variant. All right, and that's it. That's all for this patch, okay? So, some interesting quirk adjustments. Most excited personally, I am about the Boiler Jam Chance buff, as well as the extra armor for the Fafnirs, because you guys know I love me some Fafnir. And we might also have to play some Cicada, specifically the X5, see if we can do some brawling. And of course, test out our new legendary mechs. Looking forward to both of them. Uh, Timberwolf is probably going to be better than the, than the Quick Draw, but who knows? Like, with the Quick Draw, my problem is I know how flimsy these guys are and how easily they die, so. Ah, I'm on the fence with this one. It's definitely gonna be a powerful build, looking at the hard points, but it really, really depends on how survivable this mech can actually be. So what are your thoughts? Let me know, as always, in the comments below. Thank you so much, supporters. Couldn't do it without you. If you want to join Team TTB, check out the Join button right here on YouTube. Super thanks button in the comment section, or of course the links to Patreon, or the merch store listed in the video description.